good morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 and 2 class. Today we are going to be talking about a special type of function. It's the absolute value function. We're going to be talking about absolute value equations and inequalities and how to solve them. We already learned how to, how to deal with compound inequalities, so now it's time for absolute value. Please remember that absolute value is the distance from zero, which is represented by this symbol right here. It looks like two parallel lines. The absolute value of a number is always positive. Why? Because it's a distance from zero. You cannot have a negative distance. A lot of students sometimes argue with me about well, Mr. Moore, I scuba dive. And I went 35 feet below sea level. And yes, you did go 35 feet below sea level. Yes, you did. But you did not go negative 35 feet. You went 35 feet below sea level. So distance is never negative, OK? And I'm going to prove that to you right now. When you're solving absolute value equation, it's very easy, but you must remember that absolute value has a positive and a negative side. For example, if I tell you the absolute value of x is 3, well, x can be 3 or negative 3 because the absolute value of 3 is 3 and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. Why? If I have a negative 3 right here, the absolute value of negative 3 is the distance from 0. Isn't this 1, 2, 3 away from 0? So the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 3 would be 3 because it's the distance from 0. If x is 3, that's also 1, 2, 3 away from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is also 3. Absolute value always has a positive and a negative root. Always remember that. If you remember that, this is a really simple lesson. So absolute value is a distance from 0, and you always have two roots, a positive root and a negative root. Knowing absolute value has two sides makes it much easier to solve absolute value equations and inequalities. For example, what are the solutions of x plus 2 equals 9? Graph and check your solutions. You always want to check your solutions for absolute value because sometimes you will solve for a value that does not work when evaluated. And as we know, these solutions are called extraneous. OK? Nice and easy. Now, let me show you the procedure because it's always the same. I want you to solve absolute value of x plus 2 equals 9. Number one, isolate the absolute value. So in this case, how do I get that absolute value alone in this particular case? That's exactly right. Subtract 2 to both sides. And once I subtract 2 to both sides, I'm left with the absolute value of x equals 7. OK? Once I have the absolute value alone, I split the equation or inequality. This works for both the equation or the absolute value inequality, I promise. You split the equation into the positive and into a negative side. So what do I mean by that? You literally put it into a positive and a negative side. This will be my positive side. I call my positive side the mirror image because it is exactly the same as what you see. It's x equals 7. Now the negative side, okay, it becomes negative because I multiply the non-absolute value side by a negative. I multiply the non- absolute value side by a negative 1. Please note that if you're working with inequalities, you must flip the inequality sign of the negative side since you multiplied by a negative 1. So my positive side is the mirror image. My negative side, I find that by multiplying the non 
absolute value side by negative 1. So in this case, the non-absolute value side was the 7. I multiplied 7 by a negative 1, giving me x equals negative 7. So my solutions here are x equals 7 and x equals negative 7. Step 3 is just solve both equations. In this case, they were already solved for us. Trust me, we'll have plenty of, of examples. And then step 4, check your answers and graph it if required. Now, as far as graphing goes, inequalities, you know how to do that. We've done that a bunch of times. Sometimes, though, my boys get stuck because they say, how do you graph x equals 7 and x equals negative 7? Really simple, guys. Here's your negative 7. Here's your 7. x equals negative 7 or 7. Done. There's no shading because it equals one exact value. It's not an inequality. Does that make sense in a nutshell? Okay, th this, is, this is it, by the way. This is your lesson. That's it. Those are the procedures. Now we're just going to practice, practice, practice. Okay. You with me here, boys? Okay. All right. I got to move on because I'm running out of time. Remember, we have a video. Okay. Starting from 100 feet away, your friend skates towards you and then passes you. She skates at a constant speed of 20 feet per second. Her distance from you in feet after t seconds is given by the equation d for distance equals 100 minus 20 t. At what times is she 40 feet from you? We're calling 40 feet. That's my distance. So 40 equals the absolute value of 100 minus 20 t. Okay. Is my absolute value alone? No. No? Yeah, there's nothing being added to this or subtracted to this. There's nothing being divided to this. There's nothing being multiplied. My absolute value is alone. So I can split it now into my positive and negative sides. My positive side is a mirror image. 40 equals 100 minus 20t. My negative side. I multiply the non-absolute value side by negative. So this becomes um, negative 40 equals 100 minus 20t. Why would it be negative 100 if I multiply the non-absolute value side? The non-absolute value side by negative 1. So the 40 becomes negative. What's inside of the absolute value does not change, ever. Great question, by the way. Thank you. So now subtract 100. It's negative 60 equals negative 20t. Divide by negative 20. So t equals 3. Then here, subtract 100. Negative 140 equals negative 20t. Divide by the negative 20. t equals seven. So T, she will be 40 feet from you after three seconds and after seven seconds. Does that make sense? You promise? Okay. Now, I'm running short on time, so I'm going to skip to... Uh, Something more complicated like this guy, like number four. Remember, get the absolute value alone, right? Well, check out what happens in this particular case. Remember that I started out this lesson by telling you the absolute value is always positive, correct? So look what happens here. I'm going to subtract 12 to both sides. So I got 3, 2x plus 9 equals negative 2 divided by 3. Wait a second. Wait a second. Can the absolute value, when it's all by itself, can it equal a negative two-thirds? When that happens, stop. No solution. You feel me? Only when it's a negative 
yeah, when an absolute value equals a negative, it's no solution. For example, look at number 5. I add 5 to both sides to get the absolute value alone. The absolute value is alone now, and it equals negative 2. Wait. Can an absolute value, when it's alone, equal a negative value? No solution. You feel me? Okay. Now, again, I, I apologize, guys. This this uh, has really killed my my time has been killed here today. Um, let me show you real quick word problems because this concept is easy. I know you guys can figure it out. But let me show you how to set up word problems. This is the key to the city right here. This is the best equation I've ever come up with in my life. A company makes boxes of crackers that should weigh 213 grams. It should weigh 213 grams. A quality control inspector randomly selects boxes to weigh. Any box that varies from the weight that varies from the weight by more than 5 grams is sent back. What is the range allowable for, uh, what are the what is the range allowable weights for a box of crackers? This is what people like, you know, Chips Ahoy and stuff like that, they do this all the time. Look at the equation, guys. It's always going to be absolute value of X minus the desired or the goal. What's the desired here? 213. Thank you, my brothers. Always less than or equal to the change or sometimes you can call this the variance. By what does this vary? By, by how much can this vary? By 5. And then you just split it up. Positive side. Negative side. Remember, you're multiplying the non-absolute value by a negative. In this case, you flip the inequality and you solve. Add 213. X can be less than or equal to 218. Add 213. S can be greater than or equal to 208. So my allowable range, X can be greater than or equal to 208 grams, but it must be less than 218 grams. I know that there are a lot of examples I did not do in the PDF. Everything works the same. Real quick, last thing, I swear. When you see it like this, you still have a positive side, which is the mirror image. I will not solve. I'll just set it up. Now, real quick, the negative side, choose one of them to make negative. So the positive is the same, but on the negative side, I'm going to leave 8x plus 11 alone. Distribute a negative to everything in the second absolute value, making a negative x minus 17. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry I had to cut it short. Hope you learned a lot. Have a great day and a great weekend. Homework is valid. Peace.